Huff, Wycliffe, Tyndall, etc. The lessons of the past should never be forgotten, but we should cover with a broad mantle of charity much of its wickedness. The church early lost the inspired message and unconsciously adopted the error that the teachings of the bishops were the equivalent in authority of those of the apostles. Through this broad channel, grievous errors swept away precious truth. Lord's old Roman world declares, in the second century there were quiet bishops, intrepid martyrs, who addressed their flocks in upper chambers and who held no worldly rank. The third century saw the church more powerful as an institution. When Christianity in the fourth century became the religion of the court, it was used to support the very evils against which it originally protested. The clergy, ambitious and worldly, sought rank and distinction. They became lazy, arrogant and independent. The church was allied with the state, and religious dogmas were enforced by the sword of the magistrate. Fortunately, there are always advanced thinkers on all lines. Such are generally considered fools and persecuted. In reality, they are the greatest benefactors of mankind. Huss suffered for his faithfulness to the Bible. Wycliffe and Tyndall were persecuted. Tyndall's Bible was burned publicly by high ecclesiastics in front of St. Paul's Cathedral, London. Later on, Cranmer, Latimer, and Ridley, once associated with the Roman hierarchy, but subsequently with the English hierarchy, were publicly burned because of their change of faith. In the light of today, we see less difference between the two hierarchies. Both Catholics and Protestants agree in condemnation of the atrocities of the past, perpetrated in the name of our Redeemer, one of whose titles is Prince of Peace, and who admonished, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Thank God, our mental eyes with clearer light see greater lengths and breadth and heights and depths of love divine.